but we're going to this <laughs> part of the world that I find fascinating, which is the build to rent era. Yes. Now Martin's going to tell me he's not going to talk about that. He's going to talk about something completely different. Well, well, I'm not going to talk about build to rent. I, I think everyone in the room is familiar with the term, um, but I'm sure most of you kind of think of build to rent as um, shiny tower blocks for uh, the metropolitan elite, really, with dog showers and cinema rooms. But there's more families that rent than there are young people, uh, and families with children. And we set place first up um, in 2010 as a build to rent business, but focusing on modest income households, families who are increasingly reliant on the private rented sector as home ownership becomes less and less affordable and there's scarce social housing being delivered and if you're a family on an income you're not going to be a high priority for that. And most of you will be aware there's quite a lot of tough areas in the north of England which is where we're from, we're based in Manchester. Um, and we've been using build to rent uh, over the last six or seven years to unlock some really complex regeneration schemes. And we're going to take you through three of them. And the reason for that is there's been an evolution of our thinking. We don't claim to be the experts uh, and we think that we're learning as we go along. But what I would say is it's not lost on us that as a build to rent developer, we aren't just looking to sell houses and move on. We've got to think long term about the places that we operate in. So that's making sure that homes that people can genuinely live in. That's about things about creating streets where social connections can be created. And also think about how can we foster those uh, kind of conditions that will start to create a community, because we can't do that. Obviously, we can just try and create the right environment for that. So let's crack on, because time's running out. Um, and I've got about another 30 slides to get through. Thankfully, there are absolutely no words, graphs, or anything in this. It's all photographs. <laughs> Um, I'm going to start with Woodnook in Accrington. Um, some of you of a certain age will remember Accrington from the milk adverts. Um, but Accrington had um, over 300 empty houses um, that had been assembled under housing market renewal. All of these schemes are housing market renewal legacies. I haven't got time to go into all of the detail about all of this. But um, we went up to, uh, to see the council, Hindburn, um, heard that they've got this, this problem on their hands. And this was our very first project tackling over 300 empty homes that had been built over 100 years ago. Um, and it was essentially a cluster of uh, three adjacent streets um, of terraced empty housing, all two up, two down. Um, but it's quite clear to us that the problem wasn't the housing, it's just it was all the same. Um, and obviously job situations had changed over there, lots of traditional job opportunities had disappeared. But one of the um, things that drew us to Accrington um, was it was, um, it was going to benefit from a new train link, uh, the Todmorden Curve, which meant that it could be a direct train into Manchester in 45 minutes which economically changes the town's prospects quite significantly. Um, around the backs, it was, it was like a war zone, um, you know, rubble walls, all kinds of illegal extensions on the back, etc. Um, so there's be a lot of work to do there. Oops, sorry, I keep looking at these and forgetting about this. Um, inside, the problems were, were awful. Uh, these properties have been uh, stripped with all the leading. They'd had various break-ins, and there was damp in their arson. Um, but there were high ceilings, there were um, big windows, um, and within a few minutes walk, top right, top left was a lovely nature reserve, that was on the walk to the station, so that would be a walk to the train station every day through this lovely nature reserve. Bottom left there was a conservation area right next door to the, um, to the scheme. Uh, there was uh, bottom right, that's uh, um, Oakfield Park, a lovely green flag park which was just a short walk away. And then in the town centre, we had some beautiful um, listed buildings. That's the old market hall. So we kind of thought, well, if you can turn these houses around, there's quite a lot, of, quite a lot to, to, to get interested in here. But we also knew that just refurbishing houses, you know, by kind of putting a new kitchen in, you know, putting new electrics in, wasn't going to be enough. That we actually had to create, because these places have a real negative perception problem. People they get a reputation when they've had empty houses for a long time. So we knew to attract people to come and move back there, we'd have to do something a lot more than just refurbishment. So we call it back to, back to brick remodelling, where essentially we take out all the internal walls and reconfigure completely the interiors of the, of the homes. What that produced was some, was some, I mean, this was our first ever project. Um, I mean, you can see the stoneworks come out beautifully on these homes, and this is across all three streets. Um, what we've done, for example, I don't know if you can quite see it. in the middle of that photo, you can, well, you can see there's a door, a blue coloured door, and then to the, to the left you can see that there's almost like a full height window. So that to create larger homes, so what we've done is create twos, threes and four bedroom homes. We use a lot of lateral conversions. 
which create these new windows which absolutely flood the interiors with natural light. So the combination of natural light, high ceilings, these feel, homes feel super spacious. This is uh, our basic two bedroom family home and so where that was a boxy Victorian layout is now an open plan ground floor flooded with natural daylight. But I'm not going to spend too much time on the interiors because we're urban designers not interior designers. I picked on this picture at the back because we refurbished the, uh, the, the, the backyards, but essentially we, that's all we did, we just refurbished them. Um, they were nicer than they were before, but we knew that there was something that we, we'd want to do a bit better the next time. Wasn't quite sure what it was, because I say we were learning as we went along. One thing that we did put in though, is we, put in a, we demolished the rower terraces and put in a park. Um, again, learning as we went along, the parks worked quite well, but just out of that shot, um, you've got houses with back fences onto that. and there's no surveillance over that space from that side. The houses on the right, they rented in no time at all, um, for reasons I'm sure you can appreciate, living next to a park. I'm going to skip now to West End, which is in Morecambe. Um, we were asked by um, Homes England to go up and see them after the scheme in Woodnook. Um, the council up there, Lancaster City Council, uh, they'd assembled 55 properties across two quadrangles in the West End of Morecambe. It's the historic uh, bit of Morecambe, lovely gridiron street patterns. But a very different challenge here is that houses were too big. You know, a lot of the houses in Woodnook, they were too small. But here we were dealing with four, in, in some cases, five-storey houses. Um, but again, we knew we could do something with the houses um, internally and, and reconfigure them. But we knew we needed to create value from day one to make sure that people moved in there, enjoyed living there continually, wanted to stay for, for a number of years. Um, so you have to kind of create some kind of place. Now at the backs, this was the, the environment that we had around the rear, um, and what's worth pointing out is within all of this, it's not the council didn't assemble every property, um, there were a lot of private owners in there, so we had to work with some of the private owners, but what we did, um, what we were able to do was um, the properties you see on the left of the picture, um, the council had assembled a whole row of terraces, um, so we decided to knock those outriggers down, and I'll, I'll come on to that in a bit, a bit later. Inside the homes are beautiful. Um, oh, that sounds quite ironic, doesn't it, saying they're beautiful? Um, but what I mean is, you know, huge bay windows, again, massive ceilings, um, and just a, a lots that you can work with there. Um, but again, I don't want to spend too long on the interiors. Um, this is uh, the houses when they were refurbished. That uh, block that I told you on, on the uh, left-hand side in the picture of the courtyard, that's the fronts of those houses. Those houses uh, launched in 2015 in August. Um, by the end of August, they were all reserved. Um, and I think you'll agree that actually working with the historic fabric of the West End has really produced a really, well, it's just, it's brought back the grandeur of, of, of these Victorian places. I mean, that, that corner building alone, I mean, you wouldn't design and build that brand new today. Um, uh, and there's two three bed bedroom houses in there. Um, but doing a really sensitive refurbishment to the front and working with the history of the area. But at the back, um, and so you can see over on the left there, we knocked down all the outriggers. Um, and what we did, the reason I mentioned the, uh, the back alley in, in Woodnook is in that we just refurbished it, but it still had six foot walls and you didn't, you know, there was no sort of sense of community, is we deliberately put in lower fences here um, at the backs, gave everyone a bit of pri privacy immediately with a six foot a piece of fence but we dropped everywhere the fences the walls this is a, a car park essentially um, but because the traffic movements are so slow and so infrequent whenever I go down there at half past three four o'clock on a weekday it's teeming with kids playing the, the neighbours are all chatting over the fence in fact we had our first residents going on holiday with each other um, within two months of moving in and I think it's that approach that we haven't deliberately put up barriers between everyone. And, and one thing that breaks my heart when I go to all these new build housing estates with like help to buy 99,000 pound homes, well, in the northeast, um, is you go in the back and there's all these six foot timber fences which just build barriers up between people. And this is the first time that we start to understand actually if we drop some of those barriers and actually from day one, while some people don't like that idea, I, can, I find three or four people who love that idea, particularly if you've been a long-term renter who's been moving from place to place. So we kind of thought, well, we're onto something here, actually. It actually creates value. It's nicer than looking at a, a backyard. Um, and I think, you know, considering we had to work with a number of private owners as well, uh, we're quite proud of the result we, we achieved there. So you can see here, these are the private gardens with new terraces as well um, on the first floor overlooking um, the, main, the main 
courtyard essentially. We have to get moving. Um, interiors, we're not going to dwell on that because again, we're urban designers. So this now takes us through to the Welsh streets. Um, and I'd just like to point out through all these projects, all of these projects have been delivered with just purely our own money. There's been no grant funding gone into any of these projects. And that's because we've been able to take a long-term bill to rent view on these things, which I'll touch on at the end. Um, by the way, if that street looks familiar to anyone, that's because it was the, uh, used to be the set of Peaky Blinders. Um, so that's the street all painted up. Um, unfortunately, well, fortunately, it's not painted up now. Um, it's been revealed, all the, all the original brickwork, and there are families moving and living in there now. Um, but the Welsh Streets was our biggest project yet. This was 450 empty homes in one neighbourhood across seven streets. Um, but again, you know, we, we arrived there, the council asked if we could come and, come and speak to them about the Welsh Streets. They had a problem on their hands. It's not something that a volume house builder wants to take on, refurbishment. And without grant or a bill to sell model, it just doesn't stack up. But of a long-term investment, it starts to make sense for us. We thought, well, what a handsome street. There's our starting point. That's what we want to try and get back to, potentially. But obviously the houses weren't in that condition when we came in. Um, some of them have been empty up to 15 years. Um, and obviously the impacts that's had on the surrounding neighbours as well. You know, it must have been awful for them as they sort of saw the life disappearing from their community, increases in crime, drug, drug abuse, antisocial behaviour. Inside, it wasn't much better either. Um, as I say, lots of uh, water ingress um, and lots of arson as well in some of the properties. Um, I'm showing you this picture because, again, similar to uh, the Morecambe scheme, our immediate decision was let's knock all the outriggers down on these houses and actually let's do something here that really starts to build on the principles of, of Morecambe and start to create a community. So this is the houses now from the fronts. Uh, we've now got a collection of two, three, four, and five bedroom family homes. Um, this, how, how long is that, by the way, when I've got the bell? You, you've gone a long way over. You've got a minute left. A minute left, all right, well. So good we let you just go. All right, well, look. <laughs> These houses we launched in 2017. The first 25 houses were snapped up in the first 24 hours. Um, since then, we've built another 150 homes there, and we've got another 150 to go. Um, and they're all let before they've even been finished, um, such is the demand. And I think it's because there's that quirky sort of combination of, of period homes with a thoroughly modern interior. Uh, and I want to just highlight this picture because one of the things we did is we got rid of the small little metal fence buffer spaces in front of the houses. And instead we planted new, uh, put new planters in between all of the bay windows, we put new planting in the streets. We relayed all the streets, we put little bits of seating in there, because that's where life happens on the street. Um, what that's led to, and, and again, for, for rented, because often people kind of think, oh, it's transient. These people you know, kind of get that there's somewhere here that they can now stay and put down roots. So these streets are now flooded with, uh, with potted plants, and I was only up there last week, and there was tables and chairs out on the street, which was lovely to see. Um, and then around the backs, so we got rid of all the outriggers, so there's a combination of private terraces and private gardens, but they all open out onto a communal garden, which we kept deliberately simple because we, we don't know what residents want, um, because obviously we're doing something new here. So it's, it's a pretty simple landscape strategy, but we've set money aside for the residents so that when it's all stabilised and when everyone's moved in, to try and understand what they want um, to bring them together as a community. Lovely interiors. Again, it's not an interior design conference. Um, and as I say, it, the great thing has been that about 60% of the residents have come from within one mile of here. This is in Toxteth, which is a pretty low income area. And it's quite clear there's a lot of people, you know, wanted to, to, to come back to Toxteth. This is a shot uh, that we took just I was up there last summer. Um, and this is exactly what we wanted to see happening. Neighbours having a glass of wine, chatting over the fence, getting to know each other. This is a picture they sent in to us. These guys had only been living together for about three months. And there they all are in a barbecue in the back and enjoying themselves. Um, one, of the, you know, one of the things we've experimented with is, is, is public art, you know, there's nothing there to actually say, it's the Welsh streets, but as I did have a video, but I'm not going to have enough time for this, it's about two minutes long, so we'll, we'll skip that one, but just to summarise, again, all of these schemes, areas of last resort, people thought there was no future for them, um, but if you can take a long term view, if you can reconfigure and not just refurbish, I think what this demonstrates is Victorian housing, as I think as we all know here, I'm probably preaching to the preach, it still offers a fantastic living choice for people. 
So I'll stop there and um, skip my movie slide. Oh, oh yeah, and also it's uh, 24 national awards for the, uh, for, for the approach so far, <laughs> so that's not bad. Um, but yeah, let's skip that one. Thank you. Thank you.